So, at this stage in proceedings, I'd hope to be able to connect a microphone up to the preamp and do some subjective testing and tell you all that it had a certain creaminess in the upper mid-range, uh, robust tannins, um, a fruit forward character on the palate and uh, notes of blackberry and dark chocolate. But unfortunately, we're still faffing around with test equipment. Let's get to it. In my previous video, I waffled on at some length about how we we're going to adjust R35 here in order to get um, minimum distortion at low frequencies from the output transformer. In practice, that turned out not to be the case, and I was a bit concerned that my whole little scheme here with the negative impedance converter was not working. Um, so off camera, I tried a little test, and what I did was to, um, just with a wire link, to short R35, 45 rather, here. Oh dear, that's not right in. There we go. So yeah, just wire link across there. And what I found was that the distortion jumped up by about 10 dB, so we're uh, about minus 60 to about minus 50 dB. So um, output level remained about the same. Um, I think dropped slightly, which is correct. That makes sense because this is providing positive feedback. So if you remove that, um, obviously um, with that shorted, there's uh, there's no voltage drop across here, and so there's no positive feedback applied there. So it does look as if it is working. We're reducing the distortion by about a factor of three. So that's pretty helpful. I'm pleased to see that. Um, so my thought is that what we need to do, that's bothering me now. There we go. Dear. Okay. I think all we might need to do is simply uh, put a larger trim pod in for R35 because what I found was that if I adjusted it all the way up one end then I seem to get pretty much the, uh, the best possible results so I think I just don't have enough range here. So just quickly revisit what's going on here. There's fairly typical inverting amplifier arrangement here. Um, so the gain is set by the, uh, the ratio of the resistances here to the resistances here inside the feedback loop. Um, this capacitor here is just giving us a bit of a, a, bit of a top end roll off. So the, the critical part of this is the use of this thermistor here, R30, which is uh, a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. Writing NTC. Now, the problem that we're trying to correct for is this resistance here, formed by the uh, transform primary winding, has a positive temperature co coefficient, which is quite large. And so what that's going to mean is that our sense resistor here uh, won't be large enough. So we won't be applying enough positive feedback to fully null out the distortion. So we could either find some way to make R45 bigger in that circumstance. And one of the tricks, of course, is to make R45 um, a resistor that's made out of a very long piece of copper. And uh, that certainly works. Um, so that gives that the, uh, the positive temperature coefficient to match that, and that works. Um, but the other approach that we can take is to vary the gain of the op-amp here. So this having a negative temperature coefficient that means that this resistance drops relative to this one, which gives us a bit more gain. And that, hopefully, if I've got all my numbers right, is in the right proportion. Obviously, um, the, uh, this is a, a, has a characteristic curve. It doesn't, uh, the, the, the slope changes at different temperatures, so you, you really just have to um, make some assumptions and uh, try and figure it out really. Um, so hopefully it'll be close. One of the reasons why I didn't want to uh, go too large with this trimmer here was to, um, to avoid unsettling the calculations um, to do with uh, getting that temperature compensation to work correctly. So uh, it's one of the reasons why I went with the, uh, the 1K to start with, as that was the value that I'd used when I first uh, computed these uh, resistor values around it. So, but what I do have is 
a packet of 2K trim pots. And I remember buying those, and now I remember why. Uh, and it's because I was concerned that R35 wasn't gonna have enough range to be able to find their distortion null. I'm gonna give that a go, we'll desolder R35 and uh, pop in a 2K trimmer and see what we can do. Um, if, if perchance that's still not giving us enough adjustment, um, the best approach might well be actually to uh, give us some adjustment here at R45. And uh, I guess my, my other approach to this um, in some ways, it, it might have been a good approach actually, as uh, adjusting this does actually change the temperature compensation uh, somewhat. Um, if I'd actually uh, set up uh, some sort of, uh, you know, a series parallel arrangement with another trimmer, then I could have um, I could have done it uh, that way instead. Um, anyway, let's give it a go. So we're going to desolder R35, and because it's a component with more than two legs, I'm going to use the vacuum desoldering tool. Now, let's see if I can do this without lifting any traces on camera. Go. <coughs> Okay, so we've just replaced R35 with the 2K trim pot. Uh, made doubly sure I didn't put the old 1K one straight back in again. Now, a bit tricky to solder this one because there are so many tall things now on the board. So I need to uh, bend these leads a bit, try and get them to hold in place. There we go. I might do is I'll just get one of these soldered and then we'll adjust in a bit. Don't want to do all three otherwise I'll have them soldered in there at a weird angle. Ooh. I'm using this enormous dip but there you go. Pressing the back of that with my finger. And let's have a little look. Oh, that looks reasonable. I'd be happy with that. We can solder the other legs now. So we'll do the middle one, and then this end one doesn't need to be bent quite so alarmingly. That might give us like a nicer result. Double check that it's not sitting at a weird angle. Such a perfectionist. Let's have a little look at that. Oh, I've seen worse.
that's a little bit excessive. Just don't whisk her too much solder on one end and I'll whisk her not quite enough on the other. In the middle actually. Just put a touch more on that middle one. That looks better. I'm liking that. Okay. We'll call it done. So I've reconnected the board up to the analyzer and we're going to repeat uh, the test that we tried last time and see whether we can find a sweet spot in terms of low frequency distortion. Okay, so we're kind of repeating the test that we did last time. We are applying a 20 hertz sine wave at I believe this time a level of 50 millivolts RMS. Um, we've got the gain turned up until we're getting around about plus 18 dBV output, which is close to clipping, but not quite, I hope. Um, and we have an indicated total harmonic distortion at some minus 66 dB. Um, we're showing from 10 to 110 hertz across the x-axis there. So what we're seeing here is the third and the fifth harmonic. So let's see whether we can do any better than that. Okay, so that's about the best I could find. So that's um, got the distortion down to minus 70 dB. It's a little bit tricky as uh, you're also, of course, adjusting the gain, and that no doubt is uh, having an effect on the level of distortion as well. But at one end of the travel of R35, you're looking at about minus 55, something like that. And um, at the other end, it's coming back to about minus 69, minus 68, something like that. So it's quite close to the low gain end of its travel. But we found minus 70, and that's actually pretty impressive. So at this point, I'm quite happy that the negative impedance converter driving the output transformer is uh, doing a good job and is uh, giving me good results. Uh, that's an impressively low distortion number considering we're outputting 20 hertz at an alarmingly high level. So I think we can leave it there. Once again, thanks for watching.